I'm Real Secondary School Science teacher and Liam Cooper wants to know about what type of science topics I would love to teach. Something I think everyone could benefit from having a much greater understanding of is psychology, specifically the psychology of how hateful ideologies, us versus them narratives, and conspiracy theories spread, because I think if we had a better understanding of these things, fewer people would fall victim to them. In the age of COVID specifically, misinformation is running rampant, and if you or any of your friends or family members are being impacted by what can only be described as this mass psychosis event, I am very sorry, and I've linked some resources in the description on how you can better cope with that and how they can get the help that they need. First and foremost, it's important to recognize that none of us are immune to propaganda. Just look at advertising and how much it's impacted our lives and social norms. But how does propaganda work? Well, it selectively presents usually misinformation in order to evoke a specific type of response. Propaganda often uses very loaded language. The goal is to make you have an emotional response to information, not a rational one. And unfortunately, once your brain is primed to accept misinformation, you become significantly more vulnerable to accepting more and more outrageous lies, even in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Let's look at the brain chemistry of this, because it is really, really interesting. Part of your brain is an executive control network that is responsible for higher cognition, like thinking analytically. Research has conclusively proven that fear can suppress this executive control network part of your brain. So, for example, fear of immigrants, fear of human activity causing climate change, or fear of science that you don't understand as some examples. People with conservative views experience significantly more stress, fear, and anxiety, which makes them particularly vulnerable to misinformation and hateful ideologies. Researchers at University College London found that self-described conservative students had a larger amygdala than liberals. The amygdala is an almond-shaped structure deep in the brain that is active during states of fear and anxiety. By contrast, people with more liberal views have more gray matter, specifically in the anterior cingulate cortex, a region of the brain that helps people cope with complexity. So, ironically, when anti-maskers spout nonsense about living in fear, it's because they are. Constantly. This is also why programs like Fox News are so dangerous for their target audience. They're taking a group of the population that are already vulnerable to fear and stress and then stoking the flames of that fire, resulting in real-world, dangerous, hateful ideologies. Just look at the rise of hate crimes against Asian Americans since COVID. And even if you have liberal, open-minded ideologies, exposure to this kind of content can alter that. None of us are immune. By contrast, people who grew up very conservative or had more hateful ideologies who stopped being that way report that what happened was they thought about how the things they wanted to do onto others might hurt them and then realized they were wrong and changed their mind. Another example of this is climate change. Today, most climate change deniers don't say that climate change doesn't exist, which was a very common tactic in the past. Now instead, they rely on spreading certain types of misinformation. They quote constantly the 3% of scientists who think climate change isn't happening, as opposed to the 97% who have evidence that it is. Climate science denial is designed to mislead people. All propaganda is designed to mislead people. What is the point of misleading people, you may be asking? Well, keeping people divided and having a lot of infighting is a pretty effective way to maintain political control. It also prevents people from cooperating and changing structures that are ultimately harmful to all of us and benefit a very small percent of the population, namely the uber-wealthy, etc. There is also a huge monetary incentive. This kind of content gets clicked on, it gets shared, it gets viewed. The people who are producing it are making a lot of money doing this and they're doing it at the expense of all of our well-being. Now, this doesn't mean that some people are just predestined to become conservative or to have hateful ideologies. There's an expression, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And in this instance, the prevention is empathy and critical thinking skills. Empathy and critical thinking skills are skills that need to be cultivated, and depending on where you grow up, they might be hard to come by. But the thing is, once you become an adult, you have to hold yourself accountable. There's no expiry date on self-improvement. Now that we've talked about the brain chemistry, let's get into the computer science of algorithms. Sites like TikTok and YouTube want to keep you scrolling and watching for as long as possible. This might seem obvious, but to most people, it isn't. In fact, most people don't know what algorithms are or how they work. And depending on what sort of content you're engaging with, algorithms can present a massive problem for radicalization. So let me try and explain how they work. Let's say a young person whose frontal lobe isn't fully developed yet starts looking up videos on YouTube about NASA and the International Space Station because, hey, space is cool. 
and then they get recommended some videos about the moon landing. Now some of these are factual documentaries, excellent content, real world footage, uh, and some of them are conspiracy theories. Most of these conspiracy theories are laughable nonsense, and hey, it's okay to have fun every now and again. We haven't hit a problem yet. But depending on what they continue to engage with, they might be continuously presented with more and more conspiracy theories. And then these conspiracy theories might start to target certain minority groups, particularly Jewish people, as being responsible for the conspiracies. This then becomes a problem. Now here's the thing, most people don't start out looking for the most violent, racist, or xenophobic content. They get fed a very slow drip feed of it, and often they don't even realize that their perception of the world has been changed before it's too late. Some people might not even realize their perception has been changed at all, and this is a global problem because everyone has access to this kind of stuff all the time, 24 hours a day, all over the world. Now, don't despair yet, because there is a flip side to this. Many people are becoming significantly more aware of things like social injustice and inequity, systematic racism and oppression, and more people than ever before are trying to actively do something about that, and that's amazing. However, there are some particularly dangerous parts of the internet out there. This is why it's so important to monitor and think critically about the sorts of things you engage with online. For example, most young men don't start out as radicalized incels that hate women. They wind up on the pockets of the internet that are dedicated to pickup artistry and misogyny, alpha males, and hating women. And this translates to real-world crimes like sexual assault and murder. According to the book Signs of Hate, A Safeguard and Guide Against Online Hate, most young people have seen or shared some sort of violent extremist content, and most parents don't know how to deal with that, if they're even aware of it at all. So, what can we do? Well, if you're a parent, you have to get familiar with things like memes, because they are a shockingly effective method at spreading hateful ideologies. Sites like 4chan and its derivatives tend to be major culprits for this, and you need to become familiar with the sort of language might indicate a problem in your child. Whoever you are and whatever you're watching, there are some logos, dog whistles, and language that you should be aware of. I'm going to be linking a comprehensive list in the description. The main thing really is education. You should be looking to get information from a variety of mostly valid, peer-reviewed, empirically evidence-backed sources. And if you're watching something and you start to feel very strong emotions, you should take a minute to reflect on that later, when you're in a calm state of mind. What did it make you feel? Why did it make you feel that way? You need to ascertain if there might be some sort of motivation or agenda behind sparking those emotions in viewers. Don't be afraid to block certain types of contents or users. You have nothing to gain from engaging with online trolls or neo-Nazis. In fact, arguing is one of the main recruitment tactics for these organizations. And of course, be mindful of what you're engaging with. It's okay to mindlessly scroll every now and again, but your internet diet should be composed mostly of fruits and vegetables. None of our brains can survive on just junk. If you are worried about the worldviews or content that somebody is engaging with or demonstrating, you need to tell an adult that you trust or seek professional help. Be kind to each other, and remember, there's no room for shame when growing your brain. If there's a science topic you'd like to know more about, then comment below or reach out to us on social media. In the description of this video is some additional reading material because it's very important that you always do your own research and come to evidence-backed conclusions. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and remember, there's no room for shame when growing your brain.